Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks for a brand new unboxing of the Banis B4. I really like reviewing the Banis watches because we always get to go through their logo. I love you not because of who you are, but because of who I am when I am with you. Banis. We've reviewed the, the B2. Uh, really nice, attractive watch, male or female. Mrs. Tix really likes wearing the B2. The B3, um, I use that one a lot. That's the waterproof dual mode. Oh my goodness, I recommend that one a whole bunch. Uh, that's the B3. We have also looked at the BS19, which is their, one of their first ones that they put out, which is a really nice, attractive watch. And now we get the new B4. So let's tear into this thing and see what they send us. These are available through Amazon. They have their own, uh, basically, um, market there. And you can buy this directly off of their Amazon link. And I will have that in the show notes. And Banna sent us this directly so that they could show it off to you, which I'm about to do right now. I love it. Look at that, a little polishing cloth. I love you. Ooh, there you go. Oh, it's got a screen protector on it. That's the new watch. And it comes packaged. Wow. Whoa. Look at that. Wow. All right. Um, oh, it's got nice feel to it. Metal band. Protected in plastic. We have not seen a watch with a band like this. I'm not even sure I know how to get into it. Help me, folks. What do we do? Does it lift up this way? Yeah. There we go. Okay. We can adjust the band. Oh, wow. That's a nice build. Very nice solid metal. Let's take the protector off. Here we go. One button. Definitely removable bands. Look how pliable they are. What else do we have in the box? I see a manual hiding in here. There we go. A little man. Little. Boy, it's a hefty manual. I guess two of them. Yeah. One uh, not in Chinese and one in English. Okay. And we also have in here our USB connector cable. And this is like the standard ones. We're starting to see a lot of the uh, high-end Android-based um, watches use. The magnetic coupling base like that. This one's good. It doesn't fall off. We've seen a couple of others that just don't hold it when you twist it like that. This is nice and solid, got good magnets in there. And of course, USB connection. Let's take a look at the manual in English. See what we have. Banis. We'll go through each page. Android Bluetooth connection, iOS Bluetooth connection. So it's a tethering Bluetooth kind of a watch. Yeah. Here we go, more information. Just freeze frame it, hopefully you can read all of this at your leisure. A little bit more information. Extensive manual. And here we go. There, okay, you seeing all that? I know it's easier just to run through the watch and do it than to try and read a manual, isn't it? Okay. But there's more. Oh, no. It's in a different language. Oh, I see. We've got it in several languages. Okay. Yeah. So, same manual, four different languages supporting it, and uh, charging cable and the watch. I presume for sure we're going to take the plastic off of the watch as well and then adjust the band accordingly and put the band on. But just for sake of what it would look like, it's like that. That's pretty attractive. All right, I'll take the plastic off later after we charge it up, turn it on, and do a walkthrough, see what it does. There, isn't that a nice looking watch? Really easy to adjust the clasp and get it just the way you'd like it on your arm. 
Let's turn it on. See what we've got. Venice. I'm going to take it off while we do this. That's the starting we've come to recognize from Banis. And again, we can check all of the different languages it supports. There you go. And we're going to select English. Oh, and there's our first watch face. It's a uh, unboxing and first look, so the date's not right, and we're not on any kind of connectivity with any networks so you're just getting a look at it right off of the bat i guess these loop oh some really nice ones all right that's the one we started on right so let's go to the right check these other watch faces out wow now it's got a rather large cut off section at the bottom and a fast timeout um for flat tires, it's pretty big. I don't know if that's just a, that watch face or that's consistent. It looks like it's consistent. But you do have some interesting watch bands or watch faces here. A nice uh, dig or analog watch face. They say smartwatch on all of them. They're easy one to see from a distance in the dark. Just the time with a second hand going around. Another one. And we're back again to the one we started with. All right, so that's the watch faces. If we slide to the left, we get into apps. And if we go up and down, it looks like we go through the pages of apps. Looks a little bit bright. It's kind of washed out on the camera. So we're going to have to uh, adjust the uh, brightness a little bit. Let's go into the display and change the brightness all the way down to 1. Yeah, that'll be a lot easier. And screen timeout, we're going to raise that puppy up to 60 seconds. And we don't have to worry about it going out on us either. Okay. We're back again. So no matter which way you push it, I think we're going to end up coming back uh, to all of the uh, menu items. Right? So you have the watch faces or you go into all of your, um, your apps. We have basic... Whoa. Look at that. It's got the tilt thing. I'm just tilting it and it's switching automatically. Oh, that's cute. Could get kind of challenging if you're out walking and trying to get these things to settle down. We have the basic phone book. When you synchronize, you'll get your uh, contacts in there, of course, and your dialer for making an outgoing phone call. Bluetooth connected to your phone. So you're going to be able to talk and hear the conversation through this watch using your phone. It's not a standalone SIM kind, okay? And... We exit out of here with the button, all right. Messages, of course, for your uh, text messages will be in there. We're not connected, so we're not getting any of that right now. And your call logs. So we've seen all that before on your basic tethering watches. We have notifications. The ones that you have selected and turned on in your phone will be pushed here to your watch. Your find the device, which when you hit start, if you're connected to the phone, we'll cause it to ring, and um, you'll be able to locate where your phone is. The basic calendar, which is not showing you much other than the month and the day, but you can't bring any date up and do anything with it. And your Bluetooth connection, where you'll actually make that connection to your phone. Again, basic stuff. Bluetooth music will allow you, when you connect it, to play music that's on your phone through your watch. And you'll have control over it right here. Bluetooth camera, depending on whether you're on Android or iOS, will let this work as a remote control for the camera on your phone. And you'll be able to take pictures directly from your phone. Alarm is where you basically set your alarm time, repeat once, and the alarm tone that you want. We'll check those tones out later. 
and then an onboard pedometer, which you can start and then start walking and it should be tracking your steps. He says, <laughs> well, you can go into the options. You got your goal that you can set. You set your height. You can set your other parameters in here as well. And your weight. You don't have a stride, so your pedometer is going to be stepwise accurate, but you really won't be able to calculate distance unless you multiply out your steps appropriately to your stride. But that's typical in most of these uh, tethering watches. You just have your height and weight to calculate calories, but nothing to calculate true distance without your uh, stride. The sleep monitoring capability that you can turn on, wear the watch, and it'll tell you how well you slept that night. You have the Siri connection, or in the case of Google, your OK Google thing, so that you can tap it and speak to your watch and have it say the results back to you through, uh, through the watch from your connection to the phone. So it's using the Google app within your phone to do all of that. The heart rate monitor built in here in the back is activated by hitting start. The green diode comes on and we can measure that by hooking it up to our wrist. And that's pretty quick re uh, results to pop in there. And right now, it's set at just giving me one reading on date and time. But we should have an option of going into a mode of repeating. And if we do that, and we start, and we hold it nice and tight. Oh, pops off of me. Now we should get a repeating heartbeat or heart rate. And over time, when you watch that, you tend to get more accurate ones. Now, this is obviously quite low. I don't think I'm doing that low. But you see how it's popping up now as it starts to normalize and comes up with a much more accurate heart rate. So you can get the single heart rate or you can get the sustained repeating heart rate with it. And then you have your sedentary reminders, which is like a looping... Um, alarm that every 30 minutes up to 300 minutes it will notify you to get up and take a stretch break or whatever you set a reminder for taking medicine whatever that turns out to be the voice memo is usually where we test how well it records this is a test record of the b4 smartwatch we save it and we can play it Speakers are right here in the back. It's got good bass to it. I'm not sure how much you're hearing. This is a test record of the B4 smartwatch. Nice. Haven't even checked the volume levels yet um, to see where we are, but even at that volume, it sounds pretty good. Pretty good for a voice recorder built into it. You can turn power savings on and off, which, of course, will extend your battery life. This is the app that you want to scan and to put, or the barcode, the QR code that you scan to put the app on your watch, uh, <laughs> on your phone, that you'll be able to connect Bluetooth with and work together with. And I've seen that pattern before, and that's a Fundu Wear app. So you can skip all of this stuff and just go to the Google Play Store and download the app called Fundu Wear and... Uh, that's the one you'll use to link together. And here's a basic stopwatch, which we can start here. You can collect lap times. That's the number, and this is the time itself. And after you do a few of those, you can review the results. Of course, you can stop it, and you can reset it. Little stopwatch on there as well. OK. Motion is the uh, different gestures that you can use. Like right now, we have the wake-up gesture, so when you tilt it, it'll turn on and off. You can have the settings switch main menu and turn that on, and the shake to answer a phone call and turn that on if you want. I usually leave those off personally. And on this kind of a watch, I also turn off the wake-up gesture because... 
it's a hardcore one. When you turn the watch slightly, it goes off. And if you're doing a voice recording or something, you lose it. It doesn't stay. So if it's a basic tethering watch using the Fundu app and has this feature, I'll keep them off. Of course, I have to push the button to see the time. It's a trade-off. Or you can leave it on periodically, you know, depending on what you're doing. But with it off, you see it stays on the whole time until it hits the timeout. And if it's off, it doesn't turn on. You have to touch the button. And it'll stay on then, in this case, for 60 seconds, because that's what we set it for. Uh, clock is where we can select which one, which is the same thing as touch and hold. So if you forget how to do that, you can get to it there. You can sync, which is turned on with your uh, phone, and it'll pull the time in from your phone. But if you don't sync, you can go in there and you can set everything manually down below by turning that off, including changing the time format to 12 hours, if you like that kind of time format. Change it there, then turn your sync on, and now you'll be displaying in 12-hour mode. Okay? Little trick right there. This is uh, the different user interfaces. It's using just the plain black one, but we can change this one where you have, um, or the icons are plain black, the one we were looking at, are there in color. And then a calculator, which every watch should have a calculator, right? Uh-oh. Lost my numbers even when I did that. Okay. Simple calculator, clear. And then finally, the themes are the different themes that are in the background. I don't know if you can see, but there's little hash lines there. It's kind of gray, black and gray lines. And that theme is kind of bubbles. You see them in the background? And the first theme is just plain black. And then settings, we've been waiting for this. Our Bluetooth settings, we can turn the power on to Bluetooth. When it'll start going out there, it's visible, and then you can find it with your phone so that you can link your watch in your phone. The clock we already looked at because we had an icon for that. Sound, you can have it just ring the alarm uh, sound only. Uh, you can change it to vibrate only, vibrate and ring, or vibrate first, and if you don't respond to the vibrate, then ring. Or, of course, you can mute the whole thing. I usually vibrate and then ring. That's kind of fun. And these are the ringtones. Well, that sure sounds the same. Let's go back to two. I guess they are the same. But three was different. Here's four. Oh, that's fun. I haven't heard that one before. And five. Oh, these are all upbeat. I like it. I'm going to stick with five. And then notifications. You have tones for notifications, too. Okay, we've heard that one. Just a plain beep. Uh huh. Oops, sorry, four. And five. Creative. All right, I'll stick with that one. So those are all your sounds. And then you have your volumes. Multimedia has only been on three. Ring and notification were on six. So we can turn this up. That's up all the way. Here's what they sound like softer. Oh, barely, barely audible. And those are the ones that we've chosen. Okay, we're all set on that. Whoops. Display. 
our brightness level and our timeout we already set. International. We can auto sync, which is on, to our phone to pull down the language, or we can select the language, which we already saw at the very beginning, and change the display list of last name first or first name last. And then apps, of which we don't have any here, but through the FunDoWare app, you can download a weather app at least, and maybe a couple of more. You can also add some other watch faces, uh, basically, to the watch as well. Reset, of course, lets you reset the whole watch and erase all the data from it. And About tells us what we're looking at. It's the Banis B4. These are the address uh, information. Connected information. The version and the release time. So when you get yours, you can tell if it's got an up-to-date uh, firmware in it by matching it against this one. All right, and that's the settings. So all in all, we've got a basic, functional, tethering watch, well-built. It's got uh, screws holding the back in, the speaker in the back, one button, heart rate monitor, a good connection with a solid um, USB connecting port removable metal bands that are easy to adjust a nice attractive watch comes in a variety of colors and there will be links underneath the uh, show notes here that will let you have more information about this the banis b4 smartwatch running bluetooth 4.0 and of course the heart rate monitor and all the things that you see here all righty You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy your watch.